Tuesday night baseball from Guaranteed Rate Field in Chicago. Tonight we begin a new homestand with the first of three between the Minnesota Twins and the Chicago White Sox. The Palehos look for their seventh straight victory next. Dylan Cease, a right-handed Georgia native, gets the starting nod. Dan Plezak, what do you got? Hey, this guy's had a really solid season, and what shows me that more than anything, solid three to one strikeout to walk ratio. And if he continues to do that, he'll pitch really well in this one. Stepping up is Andrelton Simmons. He'll get us started Leading in this one under Minnesota, the lights. The shortstop, Andrelton Simmons. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. First of three here on this Tuesday night as the game's first offering is taken for strike one. And guys, you take a look at the White Sox entering play here tonight. They've run their win streak up to six in a row now, and they're really playing some inspired okay. baseball. Yeah, Maddie, this is one of those special moments throughout the course of the season where everyone kind of looks around the clubhouse and takes stock. Six in a row, you have a chance to rattle off a seventh. You start saying, hey, maybe something special is going to happen this summer. And we could be in for a cold one tonight. 52 degrees at game time, but should see the 40s before we're through. Oh, had him off stride that time, and it's one and two. Usually you see chases outside the zone on off-speed stuff like sliders, breaking balls, and change-ups. But to chase a fastball that far outside the zone tells me this hitter's not seeing it well at all. And it's fouled away. Here he comes again, 1 2. And this is swung on and missed on a great pitch that time, and the leadoff man is down on strikes to get this one started. Not a lot of guys throw that knuckle curve, but some guys have a lot of success with it. Some say it has more bite than the traditional curveball, but I think it's more of a feel thing. It just works for certain pitchers, and it worked right there. That'll bring up Luis Arise. One ball, no strikes to count. Ball that's about off the radar screen there. It's 2 0. Oh. Time for a look at the umpires working this one. Behind the plate is Daryl Parker. Hey, not a very big strike zone, but a strike zone that kind of moves around a little bit too much for my liking. Yeah, Dan, I know there's not a clear scouting report with Daryl. I'll tell you what, you're going to know in the first two innings where he's going to be. This is the cat and mouse of baseball right here. Batter versus pitcher. You fight so hard as an offensive player to get count leverage. 1-0, 2-0, 3-1. Check out the batting averages in those counts. And then check out the batting averages in even and behind counts with two strikes. 2-0, your eyes light up and that batter didn't miss it. Now here's a fly ball. Well hit. See you later. Over the wall, a home run. A two run dinger off the bat of Nelson Cruz fourth home run for him on the season as the twins have taken a two to nothing lead. Love the homer in the top of the first inning give your pitcher a chance to kind of regroup and gather himself with an early lead. Josh Donaldson digging in now as the first pitch to him is in there for a called strike one he'll start this one at 269 two home runs 18 driven in into the windup here comes the 0 and 1 oh, got him to swing out of his shoes on that one nothing in two hey I love that pitch right there better execution after just giving up an extra base hit and a fastball runs in a bit too close for comfort that time I like that he tried to tie him up inside on that pitch but it was a little bit of a risky situation because if you're off just a little bit you can end up plunking a guy that's the last thing you want to do when you've got a guy 0 and 2 again a 1 2. And the slider gets him swinging to gone. It's never easy to rebound after serving up a two run shot but that if that was a good indication to me that he isn't letting it get to he went right after him for the strikeout. 
So the big bat of Miguel Sano digs in next as he takes a cold strike at the knees. It's 0 and 1. The numbers offensively pretty dismal to this point down in the 170s to start play three homers and a dozen RBIs. And boy they're really giving him fits inside now as he can't get extended there and it's 0 and 2 now. A swing and a miss as he chased with two strikes and that will retire the side. But two run score for the twins both coming on this two run home run on to the bottom of the first now on the south side. It's now two nothing Minnesota. Kenta Maeda is ready to go as he'll be on the mound for Minnesota. What do we need to know here Danny. Hey this guy's a fun guy to watch pitch not necessarily an overpowering guy has an ERA in the low threes but one thing he knows how to do he knows how to pitch and he knows how to minimize damage. If you're going to have an ERA in the low threes in this day and age you're doing a lot of things right and this guy should be fun to watch in this one. Tim Anderson is in to start things out as he swings and misses at that one at strike one. And guys as we take a look at the twins at the start of play here tonight they come in looking to make it two in a row as they were winners last time out. Yeah Matty this is a classic case of hitting is contagious. They scored a bunch of runs last game and this team is flying high right now. This is a fight at the bat rack. Here it comes 0 and 2. Can't get him to chase. It's one and two. Swung on and missed. Really fooled him that time for the first out. Classic slider down and away for the strike out there. Not a whole lot to say about that pitch that hasn't been said a million times already. That's just a real tough pitch for a hitter to pick up out of a pitcher's hand so they end up chasing when they're in protect mode Adam Eaton digging in next as he'll take a breaking ball too low and it's one and oh he'll enter play with a good chance to get over 300 he's at 298 four home runs and 16 RBIs that evens it up one and one. Pitch on the way. Bases are empty, one man out. Hard sinker misses two and two. Hit on the ground down the first baseline. But this is going to be a foul ball as that keeps things at two and two. Looking for back to back K's to start the game. And he takes strike three called back to back strikeouts here to open the home first two away. The main job of the number one and two hitters is to set the middle of the order up with an opportunity to do some damage. So when you strike both of them out you're putting yourself in a pretty good position to make it through the teeth of the lineup without a whole lot of stress. So here's Yuan Moncada as he'll go after the first pitch to him and comes up empty at strike one at batting average for him at 355 10 home runs and 25 driven in a little quick on that swing and he finds himself behind 0 and 2 going to be a long day if he executes like this punching tickets right out of the gate into the windup here comes the 0 2 pitch. Swing and a shot toward right center. Cave finds some space out there for the catch to retire the side. One, two, three, go the White Sox. They trail things here two to nothing. Max Kepler, the next to grab a bat. It was a two for five effort from him in the series finale on Sunday. For me this is an important add on inning here their little lead is cute I like it but keeping the pressure on building that lead that's how you bury someone grounded to first and he'll take this to the bag himself and the leadoff man set down to start the second all right guys here's a defensive alignment for the Chicago White Sox 
And guys, what I want you to focus on today is this is one of the new age teams in the game that really rely on statistics and the numbers. And the numbers tell them that they're a better team defensively, moving guys around and shifting as much as they can. A ball and a strike. One one. Lifetime versus this arm. He's one for three. Swing and a little tapper. One out, nobody on. One, two is an off speed pitch, no dice, it's two and two. Now a swing and a miss, he struck him out, and it's two up, two down to start the second. He's looking a lot sharper and has settled in here in the second inning. It'd be hard not to because that first inning was pretty much a mess. But I give him credit for letting it go and making some really good adjustments. At the plate now, Jorge Polanco. And this pitch is up and in as he backs away. It's ball one. He'll check in here with an average of 325, three homers, and 17 RBIs. And a strike to even the count. One and one. High in the air out to center field. Garcia able to track it down for the third out. Down go the Twins in order, but they hold a 2 nothing lead. Ready to go for the last half of the inning. And up next, the switch hitting catcher, Yasmani Grandal. Yasmani. Grandal. Infield shifted well to the right. Here's the first pitch. The 0 1 on its way. And he watches a called strike at the knees. No balls and two strikes. Ah, uh, got him swinging on the split fingered pitch, and that's out number one. That is good. So here's Jose Abreu. Previous head to head okay. matchups with Kent and Maeda. He's just one for six. First offering. 0 oh, and 1 the count. I know that's the spot he didn't want to miss in, but he got away with it. Into the windup, here comes the 0 and 1. This one's down to third. And that's the second out. Batting six. The left fielder, Andrew. Andrew Vaughn, the next to bat. And you see the numbers there. He's been very dangerous at the plate, to say the least. Now, here's the first offering. Right through it here, and he's behind 0-1. That was a great hack right there. Timing was on point. Just sometimes you have bad bat barrel accuracy. Here's a splitter that's taken for a ball one and one. Hey, a two-out walk right here would be the time run to the plate. Even though it's early on, you got a guy on deck that has a lot of pop. Now a ball slapped hard the opposite way, but a little unlucky there as it's hit right to him in right field for the final out of the inning. The love of the game runs deep with these folks. MLB Network is back on the south side after this. And now in the box, Mitch Garver, and he'll twin. start out their half of the, the third, top eight. of the order to follow. Mitch Garver. Infield in the overshift here. Now the pitch. Good slider there. Gets a swing and miss. Didn't quite catch the zone there. Ball one. One and two to the Twins catcher.
still hanging with him. Another good swing to keep it going. And the slider runs away from him there, and the count levels at two and two. And this is swung on and missed. Five quick strikeouts now, and that's your first out of the inning. Boy, there's nothing better from a pitcher standpoint than watching that high fastball, a high piece of cheese swung at and missed. That pitch looks so inviting to hit, but it's awfully tough to put in play. So now to the plate will be Andrelton Simmons. As he'll take a look at his strike on the outside corner, it's 0-1. He was a strikeout victim to open up the ball game. That's in there, and he's deep in the hole now, 0-2. So two pitches in a row on the outside corner for strikes. You think he stays out there? I think he does. One thing you don't want to do, though, Matt, it's not a good idea to throw the same hitter, the same pitch three times in a row, back to back to back, but I think he might throw it here. Fouled off. Bases are empty, one man out. Right side. And that'll find its way into right field for a one out single. Boy, that's a pretty good pitch. You see this changeup down in the zone. Almost ankle high with two strikes. A pretty good pitch, but the result isn't very good. Yeah, the result, Dan's a ground ball with eyes through the middle of the field. And you know what it looks like in tomorrow's box score? A bullet line drive. Luis Arias is at the plate now as he looks at strike one. Swing and a miss, and he's in the hole 0 2 now. Nothing in two count, and the pitch. Well above the letters with the fastball that time. Late making contact on that swing, and we'll do it again on one and two. Hoping to send him packing, pitch on its way, and he fouls this one off. Simmons leads off first with one away. Lofted in the air out toward right center. Long run for the center fielder, but he won't get there. It falls in. And they'll have runners at second and third following the one out double. Well, he was definitely struggling coming into this one, but I think we can say oh, that cold good. streak is officially over. That's his second hit of the game, and it goes for extra bases. We'll see now if this game proved to be a huge turning point for him. Here's Nelson Cruz now as he will take strike one on the fastball here. No balls and a strike. He's got a chance to add to this early lead as he'll bat with a couple of guys in scoring position. And a check swing here as he couldn't help himself and it's ruled strike two. This is a situation where you're going strictly for the strikeout. Infield in and from the offensive standpoint, you're just trying to create hard contact and get it by that infield. So he racks up the swinging strikeout on the breaking ball. Nelson Cruz is at number two here in the third inning. Here's the third baseman, Josh Donaldson, fouled away, looking to put the ball in play here. He went down on strikes in his first at bat. Come set, the 0-1. Runners at second and third with two gone. And that gets the black on the outside. A good slider that time. Boy, I love the way he's competing out there on the mound right now. He's got a chance to rack back-to-back K's with two. But we'll have to press pause as that strike three to retire the side. Twin strand a pair as they're unable to add to their 2-0 lead. Leading off for the White Sox, the designated hitter, Yermin Mercedes. Now here's the first offering. The offense better get it going right here because they certainly can tell from their dugout. This guy is carrying himself with a presence out on the mound. He's got feel for all his pitches. And it's quickly 0-2. Looks at a ball one and two. Hey, textbook waste pitch right there. Does he go elevated fastball again or something slow below the zone? 
And he takes strike three called on the fastball, one gone. Next up, Leori Garcia. He homered in the series finale back on Sunday. Garcia. The pitch. Hit to first, right to him. And he'll take it to the bag himself for the out. Batting nine. The second baseman, Nick Madrigal. The batter will be Nick Madrigal. Previous head to head matchups with Kent and Maeda, he's one for two. First pitch of the AB on its way. Weakly hit to third. Fielded cleanly. Throw cleanly into first, and that ends the inning. Down in order go the White Sox. They're down two to nothing. Start of the fourth upcoming, but first, Heidi Watney is standing by with a report. Thanks, Matt. In between innings, I was able to catch up with the manager of the Twins to discuss his thoughts on Minnesota's lineup so far. And overall, he's really happy with the at-bats they're putting together. It's still pretty early in the game, but they've seen a lot of pitches Leading already. The and he thinks the two runs the they've pushed across so far 22. is just the beginning, given the quality of the at-bats they're putting together. Good stuff, Heidi. Thanks. Two balls and no strikes to Miguel Sano. Well, he's not proving that he can command his breaking ball in the zone right now. And until he does, there's no reason to bite on it. Taking all the way, and it's 3-1 and one now. Hey, usually the second time through the order, you start seeing an incorporation of some more off-speed stuff. But this guy's locating, feeling really good about his fastball. Two back-to-back. -back. And a half swing that time, but it's a full swing in the eyes of the umpire, and that'll be the first out of the inning. A lot of indecision there on that check oh, swing, and that's three. something you see quite a well, lot on three and two. Nice. When the difference between yep, striking right. out and drawing the walk in can be an inch or two, it's pretty understandable why guys aren't always aggressive with their swings. Max Kepler is at the plate now, and he takes a cold strike. A swinging strike, and now it's 0-2. Hey, that's the modern game right now. North-south. Elevate that high fastball and bury stuff in the dirt. Completely different from the east-west we came up playing. High in the air out to center field. Long run for the center fielder. He gets there, and that's the second out. The batter, the center fielder, Jake Cave. Now at the plate, here is Jake Cave. He went down on strikes in his last at bat. Whoa, and they'll I start can't. him with a fastball that's low for ball one. High and deep down the left field line. Here it comes on one and one. And he comes back with a fastball, one and two now. A good fastball above the belt is normally a pitch that batters love to take a rip at, but that one froze him. Good plate discipline to lay off the slider that time, and he draws even a two and two. The classic back foot slider right there with two strikes. A swing and a miss. That retires the side, and that will do it. Twins are set down one, two, three. They're up two to nothing. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what kind of adjustments these hitters are able to make in the middle Leading innings of this game. White Sox, not shortstop, Tim Anderson. Now here's the pitch. Here's a pop-up now. Sano moving to his left makes the play one away. The batter, the right fielder, Adam Eaton. So now to the plate, Adam Eaton. He went down looking in his last trip to the plate. Yeah, in today's game, certainly don't get completely reprimanded for too many strikeouts, but 
No one likes to go down looking. Expect him to be a little bit more aggressive at the dish this A.B. The White Sox are still looking to break into the hit column here. Another one fouled off and he's quickly behind 0 and 2. There's another pitch for a strike and this guy's really attacking hitters well tonight being aggressive early on and if he continues to throw strikes like he is he's going to have a pretty good night and a swing and a miss as they got him with the slider there two away. That's not an at bat he or his hitting coach are going to be happy with at all. It's bad enough to go down on three pitches but none of them were even in the strike zone. That's a bad look. Outfield shaded toward right center. Here's the first pitch. Yanked on the ground down the line. And he'll step on the bag himself, and the inning is over. One, two, three, go the White Sox. They're still down. It's 2 nothing. All ready to go in the top of the fifth. And digging in is the veteran DH, Jorge Polanco. First pitch of the AB now. Shocked he didn't let it fly right there. Usually you're looking for a fastball elevated to get the party started. Now a ball lined hard toward deep right field. Eaton is there and he has it for the out. Good contact to start out the inning. Thought he might be on base with some sort of a hit, but it hung up there too long. Just unlucky that time. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. Mitch Garver comes on with one gone here as he looks at a called strike one. Laced into right field for a base hit. And he's in there easily at second with a one out double. That was a great job of driving that ball, extending his arms very well, was able to get it over the right fielder's head, one hopping it off the wall for an easy double. That's one of those solid hits that you don't even feel coming off the bat. In now is Andrelton Simmons, as he'll take a look at a slider here that misses for ball one. One for two in the ball game thus far. Fastball taken, but that gets the zone for a strike. A 1 1. And it's fouled away. The 1 2. Two runs, five hits, and no errors in the ballgame for Minnesota. Fielded by Abreu, and he'll take this one to the bag for the out, but meanwhile, the runner will move up 90 feet to third base. Now batting the second baseman, Luis Arias. The next twin up, Luis Arias. He's got hits in both of his at-bats so far in this one. Pulled toward right center field. Madrigal onto the grass and that'll bring home run number three. It's now a three nothing cushion and he'll make it to second base now with two gone. The batter the right fielder. Nelson. And that'll bring up the big stick of Nelson Cruz and he might have another one as this is hit high and deep out to left. Gone. It's a two run shot to straight away left his second of the game and the twins have extended their lead to five nothing. Second home run of the game right there. He is locked in at the plate. You hear so many of today's players talk about rhythm and timing. Well he is perfectly on time in the heart of the zone. Stepping in now, Josh Donaldson. As he'll take a look at a high strike that time, it's nothing in one. He's hitless in his two at bats so far. A one and one count now to Donaldson. Well out in front of the breaking ball there for a strike. Here comes the one two. 
hits this one hard the other way and the inning will continue as that's through for a two out hit. So some success with two out keeps the ending alive for Miguel Sano and now he'll get into scoring position with two away and this might be the kind of a B that gets him out of that slump smart hitting here just going with the pitch using the whole field instead of trying to do too much the results speak for themselves now time is called and this might be to buy a little time for that reliever to get loose here comes Tony La Russa out of his foxhole at the end of the dugout and a change is forthcoming as that's going to do it for his starter here this evening. So he'll depart here in the fifth after working just four and two thirds and he's on the hook for the L unless this one turns around. Jose Ruiz will come on in relief as he'll make his second appearance of the season so far. Here's Miguel Sano. As the first pitch misses to him it's ball one 0 for two from him so far in this one. Sent on the ground out to second. And not too shabby out of the pen. Takes just two pitches to get the ground ball, and that ends the inning. But they strike for three in the inning. Two on this two-run home run. Middle of the night from guaranteed rate field. It's the Twins five and the White Sox nothing. Welcome back for the bottom of the fifth. Here's Heidi Watney. Well, Matt, I had a chance to discuss the state of the White Sox offense with their manager in between innings. And he told me, overall, he's not happy with the at-bats they're putting together. They haven't had a single guy on base yet, so it's starting to feel a little desperate down here. But he said they've unfortunately just been faced with some really great pitching today. The key going forward is to find any way they can to get him out of his rhythm on the mound. Now, that may be a tall task, but they feel the little adjustments could lead to things turning around for them. Good stuff, Heidi. Thanks. I love the fact there was no panic at second base right there. He had plenty of time. He knew his runner. There might have been a little fumble with the exchange, but plenty of time to get the guy out at first. So here's the slugging first baseman Jose Abreu now. As he'll get caught chasing a bad one there at strike one. Comes into this at bat 0 for 1 in the ball game. Oh, a diving effort as it's off his glove. And there is some stick to it of this as they still manage to get the out at first. What a play! The left fielder, number 25, Andrew. Base is empty two away and up to the plate next is Andrew Vaughn. Line drive to left and the White Sox have their first hit of the game. So the base hit here nets him a base runner with two away as we check out the league leaders in team up batting average Chicago. here in May. And in fact that hitter. number is not only Your the man. highest in all the American League but is actually Maybe. the highest in all of baseball. So next to hit is Yerman Mercedes struck out in his last trip to the plate. Yeah Maddie, and he was locked up by a good fastball for strike three last time. I'm interested to see if they. Well the side is retired as they make the play. White Sox leave one. They can't chip into that five nothing deficit. Top half of the sixth about to get started. And coming forward, the veteran outfielder, Max Kepler. Ready to deliver. Here comes the first pitch. Curveball. Swing and a miss, and he's behind in the count 0 and 2. Good waste pitch, 1 and 2. Pretty standard fastball right there, 0 and 2. Now he's changed the eye level of the batter so he can start working something in like an off speed curveball down in the zone. So it's a backwards K on the changeup that time. Max Kepler goes quietly leading off the sixth hey. inning. He comes set. Here's the nothing and nothing pitch. Now here's the ball hit in the air to straightaway right field. This ball's got plenty of carry to it, and it is out of here. A solo shot here to straightaway right field. Home run number two for him on the year. As they pile on, it's now six to nothing. 
that wasn't the plan. You just have a meeting with your pitching coach to go over some strategy, and all of a sudden, you throw one, and it leaves the ballpark. At the plate, Jorge Polanco now back. lifted down the, the line in left. Moncada into foul territory, and that's going to land foul. The 0 1, just behind the fastball there, two strikes now. Hey, that's a well executed pitch right there. That might have started middle, but you saw it breaking away to that outer part of the zone. This left handed batter right here has got two decisions to make. Is he going to ground out to second base all day, or is he going to drive the ball the other way? Throw gets him, two down. Now batting. Catcher. Next to stand in Garver. is Mitch Garver. One for two with a double on the ledger so far. Fouled off. Behind 0 and 2 now. Two out, nobody on. Chopped toward the second baseman. He's got it. Oh, and it sailed right over his head at first. Wow, you see some throwing errors sometimes, but you don't see them from the now second back. baseman that the often. Shortstop. Looked like he was trying to in. aim it instead of throwing it, and the result is an E4. Standing in now, Andrelton Simmons. As he takes a cold strike on the black, it's 0-1. He's got a hit in three at-bats to this point. Barely able to make contact. Down 0 and 2 now. Fly ball right down the line in left. Left fielder is on the move. He's there to make the play, and that'll retire the side. One scores in the inning coming on this solo home run. Bottom of the sixth is straight ahead. It's the Twins six and the White Sox nothing. So now into the box is Leori Garcia. He'll start things out Leori in their half of the sixth as they look to shake things up here for a lineup that quite frankly has been non-existent today. Yeah, I think if I'm the hitting coach right here, Maddie, I'm telling the offense to get aggressive. Just seems like we've been going too deep in counts, and this guy has got to explode. There's a swing and a ball hit in the air, and a ball that he got every stitch of, as that one, without a doubt, is gone. A solo shot here to straightaway right field. Fourth home run for him on the season, and they're on the board. It's six to one. Yeah, they dug themselves quite a hole, but they say the first thing you need to do when that happens is to stop digging. Well, with that solo shot, they've stopped digging, but they've got a long way to go before they climb out of this hole completely. Number one. Into the box Second now, baseman. Nick Madrigal. Nick. As the first pitch to him is swung on and missed for strike one. He's 0 for 1 after grounding out in his only trip to the plate so far. Yank the slider across that time, laid off for a ball. Ah, gets him to swing at a pitch down and out of the zone, one and two. Not too many guys taking the mound today with this good a split. Look at the downward action on that thing. It's falling off the table. Uh, got him swinging on the split fingered pitch, and that's out number one. He's racking up a fair amount of strikeouts now out there. That's sixth no at this point. So he's got good stuff, Shortstop. and he's fooling a lot Here. of these hitters. Anderson. Just able to get a piece of that for strike one. Hey, the guy on the mound is absolutely pounding his zone, and that's why he's been able to stay and pitch deep into this game. Oh, and he's really getting the better of him now. It's strike two. I know that feeling. Played 14 years in the big leagues and still can't hit a slider. Counts a ball and two strikes to the White Sox shortstop. It's a great job to lay off on that nasty slider right there. It's the toughest pitch. It was my toughest pitch to lay off of. I was always sitting fastball middle away, and when that slider came out, boy, did it look like a heater for a long time. The count now at two and two. 
Trying to send him packing for the second time. And rarely do you see a player of his caliber fool that badly, but he was tied up in knots that time. Two away now. This tells me a lot about this guy. He's done a real nice job bouncing back from that home run to strike out the next two guys. Sometimes you're going to get taken deep, but it's all about how you respond that really matters. Danny Mendick will get a shot here as a pinch hitter. Way to 100 pitches. Here it is. Swing and he pops him up. Looks to be playable in foul ground. And he will indeed make the play in foul territory to retire the side. White Sox able to draw a bit closer thanks to this home run. The 2 3 4 hitters now to start the seventh. And this is now a 6 1 ball game. Danny Mendick will stick around as he'll take over in right field. Now with the plate is Luis Arias. Three hits including a pair of doubles for him thus far. Luis Arias. Zach Collins is into the ball game here as he takes over behind the plate. Jake Lamb will also enter as he takes over at third base. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. Oh, one count. Here's the pitch. Count moves to a ball and two strikes now. Sent in the air out to straightaway center. Garcia is there and he has it for the first out. Now back the right field. Nelson Cruz Nelson. stands in looking for a home run number three right here as you see what he's done so far in this one. First delivery to him. Line drive base hit. Yeah, that hard hit single right there. That's clean. Three for four. He's looking locked in. Up next for Minnesota, Josh Donaldson. He's working on a one for three thus far. Fastball just misses. That's ball one. And he won't bite at that one either. It's two and oh. Well, this is a spot you'd like to be in. 2-0, good hitter. He's going to turn it loose right here. 3-0 and to him now. 3-1. and one. You can really tell they're trying to keep the ball in on this big slugger right here. Is that an effort to keep him from getting extended, do you think? Yeah, I think that's the idea, Matt. But he might spin the win if he starts looking for it in there. Lifted down the line and left. And he struck out again. That's the third time he's gone down on strikes in this one. That's the third time in this game he's gone down on strikes. Not the game he was hoping to have when he was taking batting practice, but at least his guys are ahead. Into the box, Miguel Sano, as he lays off a fastball too low for ball one. He could really use a knock here, 0 for 3 in the game so far. Right fielder giving chase. He's there to track it down, and that'll end Ladies the inning. Twins wind up stranding one. They lead it six to one. Now to the plate, Jake Lamb. He's newly entered into the ball game, so this will be his first trip to the plate here in inning number seven. Lamb. Pitch on the way. Not surprisingly here, this is on the ground to the right side. And he'll step on first himself for the out. Now batting. The catcher. Zach. Next will be the cleanup hitter, Zach oh, yeah. Collins. First pitch on its way. 
No balls and one strike. This is why the manager pencils these guys in in the middle of the order. Big spot, time for them to get back in this game with a couple quality ABs. Right side, but it's well foul. One run, two hits, one error thus far for the White Sox. Now a check swing here. Did he go around? No, says third base umpire Ricky Holiday. Ball one. Here comes the one two. He is swung on and missed. He got him. Well, you can tell by their approach that they're going to go up there and try to be aggressive off this guy, but now he's taking full First advantage of that. He's Jose. pounding the zone with strikes, and right now we're seeing a lot of swings and misses and a lot of strikeouts and no walks either. So now to the plate, Jose Abreu. Now Abreu connects deep to left. And out of here. And I mean by plenty. That ball was crushed. It's a solo home run for Jose Abreu. Seven home runs for him on the year now. As the lead is cut to four, it's six to two now. Hey, that's the price you pay right there when you try and sneak a fastball past this guy. Power hitter, and every power hitter in the league knows you got to start with the numero uno, number one, man. You got to get on the heater and adjust to everything else, and he did just that. Stepping in now, Andrew Vaughn. As he'll lift it up in the air, this is back behind second. Arias has got it, and the side is retired. But for the Sox, a run here in the inning on the solo home run. Seven complete here tonight. Now a 6-2 to two ball game. New inning set to get underway. And that'll bring up the outfielder, Max Kepler. Evan Marshall is into the ball game now as he'll make his fifth appearance of the season here. Ready to deliver. Here comes the first pitch. Now the pitch. That's by him for strike one. As we near the end of this one, it's clear the long ball has played a big role in today's outcome. Dan Dero, what are your final thoughts on what we've seen? Yeah, just non competitive pitches in some big situations, Dan, and the offense took full advantage. Yeah. Meanwhile, now, this is a drive out to straightaway right field, and it's going to get out of here. A home run. A solo shot here to straightaway right field. Home run number five on the year, and the lead is now seven to two. So here's Jake Cave to the plate as the changeup to him drops in there for the first strike. Marshall has a good reputation for preventing the long ball. One swing can change the complexion of the ball game when you're coming in late, but he rarely lets that happen. Part of what makes him as effective as he is. The one two. And he fouls this one off. He's set and the one two pitch. Looked like the changeup slipped out that time and it misses well above the zone. Full count, three and two. He struck him out the third time he's fanned in the game. Looked to me like he had the right idea with the swing on that pitch, and he just didn't get the bat through the zone in time. The pitch was away. He let it get deep, maybe trying to take it the other way, but it got too deep and was by him by the time his barrel could get in the correct position. Popped up. Lamb is there. And he makes the catch for the second out. Now that Digging in next, Mitch Garver. His career numbers against this pitcher. He's 0 for 7. Swing and a miss that time. It's 0 and 1. Bases are empty here with two men out. Right 
And he falls behind 0 and 2. Nothing in two count and the pitch. And a fastball swung on and missed as they set him down for the second time here tonight. But the Twins add on thanks to this solo shot. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth. It's the Twins seven and the White Sox two. Now to the plate, here is Yerman Mercedes. We're in the eighth now, and nothing's changed out there on the mound. Well, I've been very impressed with how this starter's going about his business, Matt. He's looking really sharp, and it's hard to know if it's headed. There's a swing and a drive, and everybody's just going to sit back and watch that one fly. A no-doubt home run. Solo shot here to left. Seven home runs for him on the year now, as it's now a 7 3 game. Man, this has been a rough one for this guy so far. That's the third homer he's allowed today. He better start keeping the ball down in the strike zone, or that total might continue to rise. To the plate now, Leury Garcia. The center fielder, number 28. And he hits it hard to the right side. And that's through for a hit. Dan, this guy's on fire. I used to say all the time, it's about 150 yeah, ABs to 200 ABs baseman. where you start figuring out what type of season you're going to have. He's obviously in May, and he's on fire. Dero, he's been locked in from day one of this season. It's continuing right now. Anything that is around the strike zone, he feels he can get the barrel to it, and he continues to hit line drives. Nick Madrigal is in for the third time as he swings and misses at that one. It's nothing in one. 0 for 2 for him to this point. Pulls this one in the air out to left. Kepler has him played perfectly as he puts it away for round number one. The batter number seven. Shortstop. And the next to bat will be Tim Anderson. Anderson. He's hitless in three at bats to this point. He's set. Here it comes. Swing and a high fly ball out to left field. Kepler looks up. Gone! It's a two run shot to straight away left home run number two for him on the year and that lead is trimmed to seven five here. This has been quite a hitting display from both sides that's home run number eight on the day. Matty V I don't know what this is. Hero is this. Bad pitching or good hitting. I think you have to credit both offenses today. They both came in with game plans. We walked around during batting practice. They were both super confident, and nobody is missing a barrel. Tyler Duffy answers the call now, looking to get this one onto the ninth inning without any trouble. The right fielder, number 20, Danny Mendes. The batter will be Danny Mendick. Now a swing and a softly hit ground ball. Throw on to first, two gone. Now that the third baseman. Yay. Up next for Chicago, Lamb. Jake Lamb grounded out in his last at bat. He's ready. Here's the first pitch. A bouncer to the left side. Donaldson's there. Throw the first with time to spare, and the side is retired. So two home runs in the inning lead to three runs on the scoreboard. Ninth inning coming up. It's the Twins seven and the White Sox five. Matt Foster enters from the pen to start the ninth inning as he'll try to keep the score right where it is, heading to the bottom of the ninth. All set to start the ninth in this one. And coming forward now is the shortstop, Andrelton Simmons. Ninth inning underway now as the first pitch is taken for a cold strike. 
You know, some guys just don't like pulling the trigger in a 0 count. They don't like the ambush tactic. They like to calibrate the speed, maybe pick up the brake. They want to know everything your ball does before they pull the trigger. Now a changeup locks him up as he looks at strike three called, one away. Flat out locked him up with the changeup right there. Usually you're trying for a swing and miss when you throw that pitch in a two strike count, but clearly he wasn't looking for it. So it's a backwards K for him. In now, Luis Arias, as he'll try to hold back on the swing, but he went around for the first strike. Three for four so far and seeing it well in this ball game. Didn't quite catch the zone there. Ball one. A one and one count. Here's the pitch. A ball and two strikes now. One out, nobody on. And it's another K. So back to back strikeout victims to start this relief outing. No problems for him on the mound since he's come out of the pen to start this inning. That's back to back K's, and he's making it look pretty easy. This has the makings of a good outing so far. Into the box now. Nelson Cruz fouled away. Two home runs already to his name in this one, and we'll see if he could possibly strike again. Counts even at one and one to Nelson Cruz. That's a good take on a fastball out of the zone. Hey, I get it. He's looking for a ball to drive, but that ball was a little bit too far up in the zone. That's one you normally pop right up. And he struck him out. So a good pitch there, and now they're going to need to string some hits together in this last at-bat if they want to get back in this thing. Down go the Twins in order. They lead it 7-5. to five. Taylor Rogers is the man called on to close this one and earn a save in the ninth. All set for the bottom of the ninth. Leading and now it'll be the catcher, Zach Collins. The catcher. Zach Collins. From the stretch. And he clearly couldn't make up his mind on that one coming in. A swing and a miss. Shot down the line. It's a fair ball. Legs churning. He's headed for second. And the White Sox get something going here. It's a leadoff double. That's exactly what now they batting. needed. Down by two runs. The leadoff man okay. puts himself in I'll scoring position you. with the tying run coming to play. The temptation for the next batter is to swing for the fences and tie it up with one swing. But a base hit brings home a run and keeps momentum on your side. We'll see how he goes about it. Into the box, Jose Abreu. As he'll go after the first pitch and bounce it into foul territory. He's got a hit in three at bats to this point. Now the 0 1. Lifted into center field. Cave is right there, one down. And the runner, not tagging, will retreat to second base. Up next to the White Sox. No left fielder. So the next to bat will be Andrew Vaughn. Flew out last oh. time up. set and the pitch you know in this situation you almost have to pitch like there's no one on base that run really doesn't mean anything with the lead they've got the hitter is the guy that can turn this game on its head now the 1 0 swinging a soft liner and that's through into right field for a base hit the runner scores from second and they inch a little bit closer that makes it seven to six now all right, here we go. RBI base hit to cut the lead in half. Get the crowd going. You can feel the energy rising. Maybe that leads to an offensive explosion. We'll see. Billy Hamilton will be summoned now to be the pinch runner. At the plate, Yerman Mercedes. Now a half swing here as he wanted to pull it back, but he does so too late. It's strike one. He'll be looking for something he could drive into the gap and drive home that tying run from first. But the runner's back easily. Hamilton, base runner at first with one out. Pitch out. Nothing doing. Quick check on that tying run at first, and he's back standing. He 
He's set. Here comes the 1 1. Slider is in there, and now it's 1 and 2. Hey, this offense has this closer in trouble right here. They have to find a way to keep applying pressure. I don't know. Everybody pop step in the dugout. Get on this guy and make him nervous. And no throw, in fact, as he'll just hang on to it. The center fielder, number 20. Striding in is Leori Garcia, trying here to plate Garcia. the tying run from second. Trying to hold the lead. Here's the delivery. Hey, this isn't going to be an easy save. These guys are making it work for this one. A ball and a strike. Two out here and a runner at second. Down the first baseline. Step on first for the out, and the ball game is over. Yeah, he does surrender one run. So it wasn't a flawless performance. But in this game, you don't have to be perfect. You just have to be good enough to win, and he was. A tight one, 7-6, to six, the final score tonight. The Twins get the win on the heels of four home runs. Kenta Maeda earns his first win of the season. Taylor Rogers hammers down the save, his 10th. So that'll put a wrap on things here this evening. For my partners, Mark DeRosa, Dan Plezak, and Heidi Watney, this is Matt Vaskersian. This has been a special presentation of MLB Network. Good night, everybody. The final line score for our ball game tonight for the victorious Twins, seven runs, 11 hits, no errors. They left five men on base. For the White Sox, six runs, eight hits, one error, they left two men on base. Time of the ball game, three hours and 36 minutes. Thank you for joining us here this evening. We remind you to please drive home safely.